after a general introduction about the pharynx let's move on to the divisions of pharynx in detail that is the nasopharynx the oropharynx and the hypopharynx firstly we'll be dealing with nasopharynx before i move on i need to specify a few things on what we'll be discussing in each of these parts of the nasopharynx the oropharynx and the hypopharynx the one will be about the applied anatomy about you know the boundaries the roof floor the, the perspective boundaries and then about the tonsils and then a few terminologies in each of them the lymphatic drainage and the functions of each of the pharyngeal parts so now let's begin with uh, moving on to the nasopharynx okay firstly as i told the applied anatomy nasopharynx is also known as the epipharynx i've already mentioned it now it is basically as we all know it is the uppermost part of the pharynx now the location nasopharynx so it is the location is it's just behind the nasal cavities now talking about the extent which is important it extends from the base of the skull to the soft palate we can also say instead of so soft palate we can also make it at the level of the horizontal plane passing through the hard palate okay i hope the location and the extent is clear now moving on to the boundaries we have the roof we have the floor then we have the posterior wall we have the anterior wall and the lateral wall firstly the roof the roof uh, we just need to imagine here the roof is obviously formed by the base of the skull and as i already mentioned the base of the skull composed of the base occiput and the base sphenoid the base occiput and the base sphenoid bones next is the posterior wall the posterior wall this is also important because uh, here we have the vertebra in play so it is formed by the arch of the atlas vertebra that is the first vertebra and this is covered by the prevertebral muscles and the fascia okay third one is the floor the floor uh, this is how this is arranged is anteriorly it is by the soft palate and posteriorly it is deficit meaning there is no proper posterior border for the floor hence the nasopharynx communicates with the oropharynx through this space the deficit is posteriorly hence the nasopharynx communicates with the oropharynx through this space now the next one being the anterior wall the anterior wall it is formed by the posterior nasal apertures okay and this is separated from each other by the posterior border of the nasal septum so again this anterior wall is formed by the posterior nasal apertures that is also known as the cornea and they are separated from each other by the posterior border of the nasal septum the most important wall the next one is the lateral wall of the nasopharynx this is highly important a star mark there anyways lateral wall each lateral wall presents the pharyngeal opening of the eustachian tube and this of the eustachian tube and this is situated 1.5 cent 1.25 cm behind the posterior end of the inferior turbinate so an important thing again so basically the pharyngeal opening of the eustachian tube that is 1.425 cm behind the posterior end of the inferior turbinate okay now this is bounded above and behind once again it is bounded above and behind by an elevation and this is known as this elevation which is binding it above and behind it is called as the torus tuberis okay and i'll be showing a picture very shortly the next slide is a picture so above and behind this tubal elevation there's a the recess a recess is nothing but a small space a hole or something like that is a recess called the fossa of rosenmuller okay and this fossa of rosenmuller is the commonest site for the origin of the carcinoma and one more important thing is there is a ridge that extends from the lower end of the torus tuberis to the lateral pharyngeal wall and this is called as the salpingo pharyngeal fold important again it's a ridge that extends from the lower end of the torus tuberis to the lateral pharyngeal wall and this what is it's called as it's a salpingo pharyngeal fold well 
here is a diagram showing the torus tuberis as i already told torus tuberis it's just an elevation that is binding the anterior uh, lateral wall above and behind and uh, there's a recess between this elevation and that is what is called as the fossa of rosenmuller and this is the torus tuberis it is an elevation here and this as you can see it is a recess well hope this is clear because the fossa, no, fossa of rosenmuller as i've already told it's, it's very important because it is the commonest site for carcinoma well here's one more diagram which obviously has a better view as you can see this is the fossa of rosenmuller okay and i've told you the auditory tube here this one because the lateral wall you know has an opening of the old eustachian tube and this is an elevation it is a torus well even a better review again we have the recess here then we have the eustachian tube here says and the eustachian tube well i think these two pictures have made it very clear of what the force of rosenmuller is it's just it's nothing but a recess between the elevations and these elevations are called as a tuberous torus tuberous well nextly we're talking about the nasopharyngeal tonsil it is a part of the Waldeyer's ring and they're commonly called as the adenoids okay so what is this as i've already told it's a part of the Waldeyer's ring so it's nothing but a sub epithelial collection of lymphoid tissue now the important thing here is its location it is found at the junction of the roof and the posterior wall of the nasopharynx i've already told the roof is the basio occiput and the basio spinoid and the posterior wall is formed by the arch of the atlas vertebra well the important thing to know here is it what happens is it causes the overlying mucous membrane to be thrown into radiating folds so it is clearly visible and the next important thing is it increases in size up to the age of six years and then it gradually atrophies right then moving on to the next that is the nasopharyngeal bursa it is nothing but again it is it is an epithelial lined median recess the location of this it is found within the adenoid mass and the extension of it it extends from the pharyngeal mucosal to the periosteum of the basi occiput bone the most important thing here is what it represents what does this nasopharyngeal bursa represent this nasopharyngeal bursa represents the attachment of the notochord to the pharyngeal endoderm during the embryonic life hope this is clear and uh, the important manifestation is when it's infected it may cause you no know, persistent post nasal discharge or crusting and an abscess in this bursa can be manifest as a, manifested as a thorn walls disease this is important here it is an abscess you know when an abscess is in the nasopharyngeal bursa then it can be manifested as a thorn walls disease well next most important thing is ratke's pouch i think we've all heard it once more just a simple glance on what it is well it is a dimple above the adenoids just a small kind of a depression a dimple above the adenoids it is nothing but a reminiscent of the buc buccal mucosal investigation and it you know to form the anterior lobe of pituitary important well and uh, this one point to remember is a, a craniopharyngioma can arise from this pouch a demonstration on how i have already discussed with you guys about the nasopharyngeal tonsils the nasopharyngeal bursa and the rapkes pouch so as already mentioned this is the adenoids the arrow pointing this then we have the nasopharyngeal bursa it is nothing but an epithelial lined median recess 
and rafkes pouch i told you it's a dimple in the you know it's just above the adenoids well i hope this is again clear with a better schematic diagram next is the tubal tonsil tubal tonsil again it is a sub epithelial uh, lymphoid tissue collection and obviously a part of the world is ring and now the important part is is its location location it, it it is at the tubal elevation okay and the important thing to note here is when it is enlarged due to infection it can cause the eustachian tube occlusion hence the name tubal tonsil the eustachian tube it is connected the eustachian tube tonsil uh, i mean the occlusion resulting if the tubal tonsil is enlarged due to infection next important thing is the sinus of mogagni this one it is nothing but a space it is a sinus a space between the base of the skull and the upper free border of the superior constrictor muscle the upper const, uh, upper border of the superior constrictor muscle that's the external layer the third layer that's a mucosal uh, membrane uh, sorry muscular coat now the important things that we have to know here is what enters through it well firstly it is a eustachian tube then we have the tensor valli palatine then the levator valli palatine and then the ascending palatine artery ascending palatine artery as we know it's a branch of the facial artery well here is a schematic diagram to show the sinus of moragni again this is space between the base of the skull here and the superior constrictor so this is the space and that is the sinus of moragni and this particular arrow that is showing here this particular arrow this is nothing but the fossa of osmola and this is the muscular uh, arrangement on how you know the muscles of the pharynx are overlapping on each other the superior constrictor middle and the inferior constrictor well i think this uh, this i've put here because uh, as i've already told the important thing is on what what are the structures that passes through it as you've already seen i've mentioned it is already mentioned here the levator palatine then we have the eustachian tube the auditory tube these are the two most important things and the remaining are you have the ascending palatine artery and also we have the uh, this the tensor valli palatine okay so this is just a schematic diagram to show what passes through the sinus of moragini and again we have it here the sinus of moragini if i have to tell you in detail again it is a recess and here you can see the superior constrictor muscle next next is nothing but a pessevins ridge this again it is a mucosal ridge raised by the fibers of it is a mucosal ridge that is raised by the fibers of the palatopharyngeus now where where does this palatopharyngeus come from this this is the muscle of the internal layer of the muscular coat yes and the most important thing is it encircles the posterior and the lateral wall of the nasopharyngeal isthmus now talking about its use like why is it encircling the posterior and the lateral wall of the nasopharyngeal isthmus well the soft palate you know during it, its contraction it, it makes this firm contact with this ridge which is encircling the posterior and lateral wall of the nasopharyngeal isthmus to cut off the nasopharynx from the oso you know oropharynx during the deglutination or the speech i hope this is clear well so basically it helps you know to cut off the nasopharynx from the oropharynx during the process of deglutition or the speech here is a picture the arrow showing there that is the pessimens ridge nothing but a mucosal ridge raised by the fibers of the palatopharyngeus next important thing as i've already told earlier we'll talk about the lymphatic drainage also so three categories firstly we have the we have them draining into the this is the first draining into the upper deep cervical uh, nodes it can be the directly or indirectly but it's through the retropharyngeal and the parapharyngeal lymph nodes now the second thing is they draining into the they draining into the spinal axillary chain of nodes 
and this is into the posterior triangle either which is present in the posterior triangle of the neck third one is these lymphatics may also cross the midline and they can drain into the contralateral lymph nodes well the last part of the nasopharynx its function come on you already know it just a briefing firstly it acts as a conduit of air and you know for warming it and humidifying it and passes through the larynx and the trachea next is uh, this is most important through the eustachian tube that is the lateral wall function it ventilates the middle ear and equalizes the air pressure you know on both sides of the tympanic membrane hence it's an important function of hearing third one uh, elevation of the soft palate against the posterior pharyngeal wall and the pessimus ridge it helps to cut off the nasopharynx from the oropharynx just discussed as earlier fourth one is it acts as a resonating chamber during voice production right the voice disorders are seen in the nasopharyngeal obstruction if there are any and the valopharyngeal incompetence the fifth one is it acts as a drainage channel for the mucus that is secreted by the nasal and the nasopharyngeal glands with this we come to the end of nasopharynx please refer to my further videos for the details on the oropharynx and the hypopharynx thank you